we are building at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel, but unfortunately they have a non-functioning aquatic ecosystem located right next to the front door. Unfortunately, whoever built this water feature first, they missed it a little bit. We want to take it to the next level. <laughs> hey, what's up everybody? Ed the Pond Professor here. I am up in the mountains of Utah outside of Park City, and we are getting ready for a regional build coming up later this week. You know my MO, I always like going out into nature, getting ideas, getting inspiration before we do these incredible projects. So you gotta check this out. Small alpine lake up here tucked in the mountains. It was rainy down in the valley yesterday and we knew they were getting some snow up here at the higher elevations. Absolutely beautiful. Some of the things that I'm seeing, there's actually an overflow going over in this section. Really, really clear water. Reason we have really clear water is because of the watershed, very clean watershed. We're just getting water coming in from the surrounding area, relatively nutrient poor soil. So that's gonna give us really good water clarity because we don't have a lot of nutrients in the water. I love this little peninsula, kind of an island effect, kind of bumping out over here. I love doing that type of stuff I'm on my projects just to add that little bit of visual interest. So you have these little backwater coves and again, all that down logs and that type of stuff inside of it. Biomimicry, mimicking the stuff that we see out here in the incredible natural wilderness of the United States. It is just full of ideas for us to gather, which is what I love about it. But look at this big rocky peninsula kind of jutting out. I could just see bedrock kind of disappearing down into the depths of the water here, but absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, look at that. Beautiful stumps. Super, super clean, clear water. So this is what I mean being a very nutrient poor lake. You can see we go from almost a bedrock, rock gravel bottom, very sparse vegetation. So you have these rushes kind of popping up and then there's really nothing. You know, there's no riparian zone or very, very little. So very little transitional areas for things to grow, but there's not a lot of sediments and things like that in, inside the pond. But this will over time, over the coming decades, you're gonna get more runoff coming down. It's gonna erode everything away. You're gonna have the snow melt and you will start depositing leaf debris and sediments in the bottom of the pond. And then you're gonna to start to get a little bit more of an ecosystem actually happening. The problem with these alpine lakes is they will freeze over. It does not have a huge surface area here. So the life inside of here is very, very tough and durable. You're not gonna have a huge fish population, if any, just due to, I can't tell the, I mean, the depth here is shallow. I mean, I could walk in 18 inches deep. I don't know how deep it gets in the middle there. Oh, look at this. Love this little rock outcropping over here. Rocky Point looking out over the pines and then you have the aspens over there in the background. Absolutely beautiful. Hope you enjoyed that incredible excursion up into the mountains outside of Park City, Utah. It's always a lot of fun getting outside, having fun with friends. My wife, Carla Woodstock, Colleen Heitzler, just getting out there, having a blast, enjoying ourselves, and then connecting and reconnecting with nature. I think that is really important, which is why I love water features. There is nothing better than having a small bit of water on a property that really draws everybody together, which is the perfect segue into this amazing project because we are building at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel, which is a world-renowned name. The facility is just impeccable, but unfortunately they have a non-functioning aquatic ecosystem located right next to the front door. So what we want to do is we want to fix this. We want to fix the issue that they have, but not only fix it, we want to take it to the next level. So I want to explain a few things here before we actually get into that. What I want to do is I want to create an aquatic ecosystem. It is a biological community of interacting organisms. You're going to find all different little pieces and parts living with inside of it, but they are also interacting with their physical environment, the rock, the gravel, the substrates, the logs, the aquatic plants, all these different surfaces are critical for the overall functioning of that ecosystem. Just like that incredible excursion that we just went on, I like to see what the natural aquatic ecosystems are gonna look like, and then that gives me an idea of how I wanna to try to replicate it using some of these different strategies that I've learned actually from nature. 
So here I have a couple pictures along the Provo River. Obviously the first one though was just taking off of Google Earth. It is showing the twisting, turning nature of that river system. And that's one of the things I wanted to kind of highlight here. And again, it seems simple, but this is in a valley type of a system. So it's relatively flat. You're gonna have this twisting, turning, sweeping motion. That high velocity water is gonna move along and it scours out. So what happens is it cuts into these banks over here. And then what it does is it's going to take all of that sediment load that it picks up during that scouring phase, it's going to deposit it further downstream. You can actually see right there. That's also a big sandbar, a gravel bar or something. So that's that fluvial geomorphology that I love talking about. So it's like it's carving, it's eroding soil away or rock and gravel and materials from one area. And then it deposits in another area where you have lower water velocities. And I want to replicate that because we're working in a relatively flat area. And so I want to try to use that as my model. Always thinking of the water velocities. So I want to pick up velocity in certain areas and I want to slow it down in others. The areas that I want to pick up water velocity is going to be that point where the waterfall actually dumps into the into the pond system. I'm going to create a push of water. Then I'm going to have a deep water zone that's going to allow the fish to kind of congregate in that deep water area. Then I want to pick velocity up again as it goes into the intake bay so it'll sweep any debris going inside of it. So here we are actually this is Brian actually I got Brian right over there. We're kind of exploring along this river system. What I love about this is looking at the depths of the water, the different types of vegetation that's growing along the perimeters, the association of trees and things like that. I think it's very important to understanding these ecosystems. A few more pictures of the Provo River. You know, I'm a big fan of using downed logs and stumps and stuff like that. You can see actually the litter of logs down here on the bottom that have been deposited over time. So you can see these trees over here on this back edge are actually leaning pretty harshly because that water velocity is actually scouring out some of the soil from underneath the roots and eventually these trees come down but that's an important part of the ecosystem because as that tree comes down into the ecosystem it's going to bring life food into the system it's also going to provide tons of habitat for all types of little small fish as well as microorganisms and insects and things like that that are going to live on the wood under the wood behind it it's going to be hiding places for all these different animals and that also becomes a foraging ground for all the different incredible trout that are actually found in this river a little bit further downstream and where we actually have a series of riffle areas and we have grade changes. It's not massive waterfalls. It's not like we're on top of a mountain. We're in a relatively low land area. So we're gonna have boulders and things like that. So you are gonna have crashing water. You're gonna have that beautiful sound as well as that very important dissolved oxygen content that is being added into the water through the action of the water tumbling over all those boulders. If you look at all these different rocks, you're gonna find them covered with all types of animals. Algae, you flip it over, you're gonna have little crustaceans and things like that living underneath it. These are all very important because they're part of the recycling of the ecosystem. They're gonna take all the little bits and pieces of organic matter that have come into the system. All that food is gonna be chopped up into smaller pieces, which actually feeds the little insects and all those little filter feeders. That's what those fish are gonna feed on. So again, it's understanding all these systems. And then what we wanna do is we wanna recreate it. Unfortunately, the company, whoever built this water feature first, they missed it a little bit. I want to point out a couple of the problems. I don't want to focus on them. All I want to do is I want to focus on what we're going to do to create an ecosystem that's going to last for many, many years. One of the things that I see immediately, they put cattails in the pond. They may have come in by birds. I have no idea. But once they get inside of the system, and especially a system of this size, they're going to take off and they will take over the entire thing, take up a significant volume of the bottom of the pond, and the pond is going to get shallower. It has less dissolved oxygen. The water is going to get warmer. It's going to stress the fish. You're going to have fish die off. So there's an actual progression. If you follow it along, you're going to see this entire ecosystem collapse within a few years. Another thing that I see as a big issue here is if you look around the perimeter, you're going to look at a bunch of small rocks. This is a commercial location. You potentially could have people, children, whatever, walking around the perimeter. I don't want to use tiny little boulders. I want to have big giant rocks around the perimeter. So that way, if somebody is walking around the edges, it's going to be stable. You can see rubber membrane actually visible in multiple areas. And that's because these rocks are getting pushed and moved and falling into the pond. It could be because of saturated soil. It also could be because of the heavy push of ice. When you freeze water, it expands. It's going to push and it's going to push. Like You have no idea the power of this stuff. It will crack concrete. It'll smash.
smash boulders. It'll move things in all directions. I'm going to put big boulders to helpfully kind of counteract that push, but I'm also going to have a deep water intake system, recirculate warmer water throughout the entire ecosystem. So we actually have an open vein of water going through everything. Even if they're inches, it's going to help alleviate that stress of that ice damming effect or that push of ice that occurs. Here's a skimmer system that's put in, which is great. The beauty of a skimmer system is they capture debris. Floating debris is going to get sucked into a catch basket, but if you don't maintain it properly, it's going to run dry and the pump will actually be starved of water because it's going to fill up this basket with stuff and it doesn't allow water to get to the pump. The challenge in a commercial location is the property managers are usually running in a thousand different directions. They don't want to be thinking about the water feature in the front. I want to create a customized skimmer system, which I call an intake bay, which is going to be oversized. This is going to allow a huge volume of debris to come into one area and they could go for many, many weeks, if not months, without actually doing any of that routine maintenance. So again, it's overkill in, in a lot of situations, but right here, it's exactly what it was designed for. The other issue that I see here is this plumbing is actually going up and over the skimmer, which is kind of odd. There's actually fittings on the back to allow you to penetrate right through it. That leads me to believe that the skimmer was not set properly. They have the cattails growing up here. They may have actually planted those cattails to be part of the biofiltration system. I'm not 100% sure. They actually do a very good job from a filtering standpoint. But again, I, I typically don't use them in small water features like this. You can see the waterfall itself. It's very, very random in my opinion. You have this big giant slab over here, which water is supposed to go over. It's way too big for the pumping system. In order to fill that waterfall stone effectively with water, you need tens of thousands of gallons of water per hour. They don't have that in that skimmer system. It just, it was not done properly. I see tons of this rubber membrane sticking out all over the place, mismatched rocks. None of the joints are matching up. Random gravel in places, other areas, there's nothing. I wanna kinda of do a quick breakdown of a few of the main things that we're going to do. Eliminate maintenance for the staff. So that's why I'm doing this intake bay. This is a standard intake bay. We have a pump located over here, submersible pump inside of a pump vault structure. As that pump operates, water flows into the volute, gets pressurized, it goes through the pumping system, and then it exit goes to a waterfall, circulation jets, fountains, etc. It's drawing water in. So what's happening is water from the aqua box wants to refill the pump vault. As soon as the aqua box start dropping down in water, the water above the aqua box is gonna get drawn in. And as soon as that water starts going in motion, the water from the pond, which is actually located over here, is actually going to want to refill that entire system. It creates that important circulation. The intake bay, the surface of it is covered in with all these river rocks. So floating debris is gonna accumulate in this entire area. Fine sediments will fall down inside and get deposited in inside the bottom of the aqua blocks. We have that water matrix type of a, a webbing inside. As the water gets drawn through those aqua blocks, it's going to constantly stir the water for us. That's very important because as the water is being stirred, the water particles collide with each other. They collide with the surfaces of that water matrix. And when they do that, they will stick to each other, conglomerate together and become larger. And once they become larger, they actually become heavier. When they become heavier, they sink. So this is all part of that filtering process. And this is very, very important because when you're sending water to a biological filter, you don't want to have a lot of sediments in the water. The sediment will gum up the filter media, which makes it more difficult for the nitrifying bacteria to actually survive. I said this is a standard intake bay. What I mean by standard is we have one layer of these large aqua blocks. So from our water level all the way down to this bottom area, typically 30 to 36 inches, three feet deep maximum on average. Because we're building in Park City, Utah, we are well over a mile high. Once you start getting to those higher elevations, it gets much colder. So this is a very harsh environment. They said they want a functioning water feature, they want to lower their maintenance, but they also want it to run 365 days a year. The majority of the tourists that are going to Park City are going there to go skiing, snowboarding. So they are there during the winter months. We want to make sure this water feature is going to be operating because it's right next to the front door. So I want to have a waterfall that's going to be able to operate. It looks spectacular during the winter time. By having the pump deeper 
it's going to pick up the geothermal heating of that deeper soil. So what we're doing for this particular project, instead of going 36 inches, we're going six feet deep. So the pump is going to be well below the frost line. This area down at the bottom, this lower section is never ever going to freeze. So now as that water is recirculated up to the top, that warmer water is going to slightly cool off, but it's going to inhibit the ice formation. We built the pond exactly like this at the Pond Guys house two years ago. And last year they had record breaking snow as well as cold temperatures and his water feature operated 365 days a year. So this is what we have to do for the Waldorf Astoria. Massive intake bay, lowering their maintenance, deep water suction system to capture that heat of that deeper layer of soil. Greg and his team are doing the demolition work. They're gonna be ripping out all of the existing stuff and recompacting the soil. The problem with recompacting the soil, it doesn't lock into place structurally. This area, right over here that I have kind of highlighted. It's very, very soft. We're worried about that migrating or becoming liquid, which could cause problems. So what we're going to do is we have to build a structural wall in between. Number one, it's gonna set the elevation for the intake bay. The other thing it's gonna do is it's going to create a barrier between this soft, saturated soil and our aqua blocks. It's gonna allow us to build everything in a very efficient manner. So these are some of the challenges that we have in front of us, but in the end, I I know we're going to be able to create a spectacular, fully functioning aquatic ecosystem exactly like this, which is our goal. Aquatic plants, fish, logs, having all those different surfaces, the river rock down on the bottom, replicating the beautiful Provo River, which is exactly what the Waldorf Astoria is looking for. So I hope you enjoy this. I hope you'll enjoy a little bit of that science lesson, talking about the limnology of how these aquatic ecosystems actually are designed. All we need to do is step back, look at it, learn along the way, and we can create some really amazing water features. Stay tuned for the next section because we're actually going to pull this project off in two days. All right, everybody, we'll see you soon.